there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, we've over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. You know, when you're thinking about high-end car audio, often I sit back and kind of reflect on those brands and those pivotal game-changing products that really sculpted the whole car audio high-end scene. And Diamond Audio comes to mind more often than not. They've got a whole new refreshed offering with amplifiers and DSP speakers and, of course, subs. And we're going to talk about it all on today's show. This is CMA Connected, presented by SiriusXM, Diamond Audio. And it starts now. What's going on, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to another CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And as we round out our entire month-long adventure, really, through this audiophile uh, category, we have come to a brand that means so much to so many, and that is, of course, Diamond Audio. Now, rich history, of course. You remember the hex. I mean, who doesn't, especially if you're in and around those competition rings. But Diamond has evolved so much. Uh, we did get a chance to sit down with Diamond a couple uh, weeks back or maybe months back now during our DSP sessions as they launch an entire slew a brand new DSP product. Well, today we're circling back and we're going to focus in on a couple key high-end elements that they want to remind you as dealers that, oh yes, they are definitely still in the game when it comes to high-end car audio. But first, let's reach out to their distribution partner in Canada, our good friends at Vix Performance and their 12-volt category leader. Let's go to Mr. Dave McLean. What's going on, Dave? Not so much, but how are you today? Oh, as usual, you do not disappoint. You come to the table with a spread of really interesting product. I mean, I know you're excited about Diamond. How cool is it that we get to talk about the upper tier of the offering today? Uh, super cool. This is a segment we don't get to talk about too much in front of people because it's usually a one specific customer we get to talk to every couple months. But it's uh, an amazing lineup of audiophile featured product. And uh, I'm just happy to finally get to talk about it on CMA. Well, definitely, we're going to dive deep. As you know, this month has all been dedicated to high-end stuff. So, you know, from a, a distribution standpoint, Dave, I guess the question I have is how important is it for you to be able to offer your customers a brand that does cover and check off so many boxes, and, and more importantly, this box here, which is called high-end audiophile-grade gear? Uh, it's of the utmost importance to be able to offer a line that has top-to-bottom uh, offerings. Um, this is a category that really is what guys want to get into, uh, but they settle for the other stuff. Um, there's no bad offerings across the board here uh, from entry level to top of the line. Uh, it's all meant to wow, and Diamond does that. They uh, they inject their, their culture and their sound into everything they do, uh, including the entry level products. And uh, we couldn't be prouder to get to talk about the top end products for once. Uh, it's a category that doesn't get as much uh, notoriety or as much appreciation as it probably should. And uh, I'm just excited for Brian to talk about all the things they're doing differently now. And uh, they're, they're really thinking about the installer when they design their product and giving us packaged products, which I'm really excited to hear about. Um, if anything, I've learned uh, in these last few sessions and the, these last few weeks, I mean, there's a certain momentum. It's undeniable. Uh, you know, last time we had Brian and Ryan on for that matter. I mean, it was just like. I was getting barraged with new product. I couldn't get away from it. It was one thing after the next. What? Another DSP? Oh, my God. What? Another? It, it was quite, quite intense. Um, this yeah. is a nice way of rounding out how those amplifiers 
can can really complete a system with the speakers and the subwoofers that we'll be talking about today. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, connect with our specialist today. He is the training technical support specialist for Diamond Audio. Let's please welcome Mr. Brian Piper. How's it going, Brian? Hi, guys. How are you? Doing fantastic today. Pumped as usual because we get to talk about gear and kind of be nerdy and geeky about it. I think Absolutely. I found the right guy that's going to help us with that. Am I right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> uh, Brian, uh, I wasn't kidding, man. Last time you just, it was a barrage of new product. It was just like one thing after the next. This, this time I, I plan on having a little bit more detailed conversation about a very specific upper higher end offering in your catalog. Uh, right. and so let's hear it from you. Like, what do you think? You know, audiophile. And audio audio. So, you know, with Diamond Audio, that, that's the lineage of Diamond Audio. That's where we started with Diamond Audio was to do high-end audio. I, mean, I go back to the original D-series amplifiers that came from Isoteric Audio, and then we fixed them and kind of made them better. And then you get into, you know, later in the years when the Hex series came out, and then you get into the D6 and D9 series gear and stuff like that. And it's all just been performance and exceptional uh, sound quality. I, I don't know how else to de define it. Uh, it. It just works and it does everything we want it to. So we are able to give our customers and the the dealers that that do our that sell our products. Sorry, uh, it gives them the ability to give something that not everybody's looking for. Or, and and pre present a product that will perform at a price point that not everybody is familiar with. You know, uh, I will say this. If there's anything about Diamond that I've learned, um, it's a brand that certainly has no qualms about innovating and nope. certainly does not color within the lines very often. Uh, I mean, right. they'll go and do something freakishly out of extraordinarily, you know, like out of the park, just because they want to prove a point. And I think that's one of the things that people really uh, are drawn to when it comes to a brand like Diamond. You know, you're going to get the consistency. It's got the lineage, but also that that wild card of you know what? Sometimes we don't give a you know what? We're just going to do it. Love yeah, that. yeah. Love that. And and that's you know that's something that we talk about a lot of times is it's not exactly what need what what fits in a box that every other company is doing so let's but let's do something that works and will will perform in a manner that we need it to for our customers and our dealers and then build it and mm -hmm. refine it to the point that it is the best it can be and at an affordable price point that works for everyone well i i think dave is uh, just as excited as i am so why don't you break down for us brian what are we going to be learning from you today so we're going to talk about what's going on in the present, which is DSP, and then some speakers, and we're going to talk about some amplifiers that we're kind of testing right now. I got a cool one to show off, uh, and we're going to talk about that stuff because DSP is the future, right? Everything is DSP and integrated parts and stuff like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about some speakers that many, many, many people are not aware of that we oh. have. And we want them to know about them because it's not new, but it's definitely something that customers should know about and dealers should know about because this brings a whole new avenue for mm. everyone. To, I to think get I know which sound. one you're talking about, but I'm going to reserve my, my comments yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, you later. might. Yeah, All right, here's mind. here's the plan, gentlemen. Uh, Dave and I, we're going to go away. We're going to set you up, Brian, for your presentation so we can really t tune into what you're saying. We're going to come okay. back, and I know Dave's kind of anxious to do a little bit of show and tell himself, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be the plan of our program today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and set you up here, Brian. All right. And, and away you go. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, audio file is what we're talking about. So what is an audio file? An audio file is a person who's enthusiastic about high fidelity sound reproduction. Um, the way I describe an audiophile is it can be anyone. It's, it's that connection to music that creates an emotional response. So when we look at product as Diamond Audio, our, our lineage and our history is a lot of audiophile products to create or help create that reconnection to those songs and those that music that that connects to everyone else 
So who remembers this stuff? Let's talk about the lineage. We talked about D7. This was one of the my favorite amplifiers back in the day. I, I worked for a shop and we installed tons of these things and I absolutely fell in love with them. Uh, big, bulky, class AB amplifiers, but man, they were impressive and they were fun to put, to put in cars and, and make those cars just sound exceptional. The Hex Series amplifier, or sorry, Hex Series components with the honeycomb uh, cone for the mid bass driver and just how well these things sounded and were sonically performers, which you guys will find that these actually still exist to some degree. Um, they are limited, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And then you talk about like D6 woofers and then the D9 woofer that we have here in the image. Uh, this was innovative for its day. It, it What it did and what it can do now in its new evolution, these are just some of what we've mastered and, and perfected and evolved over the years. So today, DSP is a big deal. And what we have learned is DSP can be used anywhere. Um, motorsports and motorcycles are a big thing nowadays. We see lots of guys doing Harleys and side-by-sides and things like this. So we took it upon ourselves to develop a DSP that was geared specifically towards motorsports. So these are waterproof sealed DSPs. Um, the, the current availability is the six channel is out. The eight channel is on its way. Um, as you can see, high resolution, 10 to 25 K frequency response, 15 or 31 band parametric, fully adjustable crossovers, adjustable time delay, uh will give you six and a half volts max output they do take high level and low level input and they have built-in bluetooth streaming so if you're doing a vehicle where you don't have a source unit or you don't want to add a source unit like a bluetooth module or something like that you do it right from the dsp okay going forward from there integrated components we have new amplifiers on their way uh, I have one here that I'd actually like to show you guys. This is pretty cool. So this is our Micro 8U series. This is the two-channel version. So what you can see here is you have the Bluetooth antenna for streaming. You have the 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 inputs here. And then you have 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 outputs. So this is 6 input, 4 output, plus your two-channel amplified output out of the amplifier here so this is currently being tested we've gone through them they work they sound phenomenal they do everything we want them to do a few adjustments we'll make and we'll be ready to go with these and we should see these hopefully really soon in the first quarter so the other amplifiers that we're going to have i like i have on the screen here this is the evolution of the hex amplifiers our, our hx series these will be uh up to 12 channels of output and have uh multiple inputs and outputs for uh dsp some of the some of the other amplifiers will have like eight channels in and uh 10 channels out and things like that so it just kind of depends on which amplifier you go with but the thing that we want to mention is that even our mono blocks will have full DSP output on them. So a, a monoblock has six or eight channels in and six channels out, plus your subwoofer output. So if you are, you know, somebody's upgrading their stereo system and has a four channel amp already, or they want to do a monoblock and a four channel, they can do one amplifier with a DSP, even the monoblock, and then a amplifier that is non-DSP to run everything outside of the subwoofer. Um, dual processor chips in these high res, um, the processor chips run at 32 bit, uh, 239 megahertz. So they are high speed, uh, dual processing chips, Bluetooth built into all of these amplifiers as well. We will have a digital remote control available for them so that you have control up front for, you know, uh, programming channels and switching between your your dsp channels and or presets sorry 
and subwoofer and master volume control and stuff like that. The other thing that's really good about these amplifiers is that they are fully bridgeable. So you can take a 12 channel amplifier, turn it into a six channel amp that bridged with high power. Um, just to give you an idea the amp that I have here on the screen, the 12 channel is a uh, hundred and 60 by 12 or no sorry it's it's 100 it's 100 watts per channel by 12 channels and then we have like an eight channel that will be 160 by eight things like that so they're high power but then you bridge them you even get more power out of them so very very cool amplifiers on the micro 8u series the great thing to know on these and like our hxms is the size doesn't really change it's it's millimeters of difference so they're they're the same size as they were already. So when you're doing motorcycle applications or small compact space, you're not adding or having to deal with any more fitment issues. So then we're gonna talk about what's coming down the road is Pro Series DSPs. These are in-car digital signal processors, uh, eight channel in, eight channel out, up to 12 channel in and 12 channel out, uh, similar, uh, similar features as to what's in the amplifiers. Um, but for those of you that run amplifiers without DSP, or if you want to run like our traditional hex amplifiers or DES amplifiers that will still be around, then you can just add the DSP and get full function from your DSP. So what I'd like to kind of show you guys now is a screenshot uh, of the software. And this is what it's going to look like. This is our, our 31 band. So this will be for the Pro Series and all of the amplifiers. It's a 31 band EQ that is parametric. So adjustable frequency, adjustable gain, and adjustable Q. The Q is adjustable from 0.5 to 10. So you can go very wide to very narrow. Uh, you have full function crossover. Uh, it's kind of hidden over here, it looks like. Uh, so there's a full function crossover in this area here that will give you Linkwitz Riley, Butterworth, uh, band pass, low pass, high pass, however you need to set it up. Uh, and it is fully adjustable. So it's not set preset numbers. You can pick whatever number you want to use. If you want to use a 63 hertz crossover point or a 4520 crossover point, Whatever the case may be, it is it is there and it is available to you. Okay. Uh, in the top left, you have your time delay, which can be done in milliseconds, centimeters, or inches uh, per channel, or and then get everything adjusted that way. Um, you have built-in Bluetooth streaming, so when you set this up, if you connect to Bluetooth, it will connect automatically every time. You have preset adjustments. You have up to six preset settings that are available in the processor. So multiple settings if you need them. You can link channels across the top and you have the, the output control of balancing out channels here. Uh, you can also link your EQ and crossover points here. Uh, you can adjust phase on this at zero to 180. And then you have a master volume. So all of these things that are going on in here, this is very standard, kind of useful. The cool thing about the processor is if you want to grab one of these, it's you, if you're using a, a touch screen or if you just grab these little numbers here, you can grab it and drag it over. It'll adjust to whatever number you stop it at. Same thing with the crossover high pass and low pass. You can grab them and drag them over and just drop it where you want it. And it'll and then you can fine tune it from there if you need to adjust the number. Okay, let's talk about some speakers. So speakers are usually the, have the biggest effect on replacing a stereo system. So one of the things that we'd been asked for a lot from not just motorcycle customers, but dealers in general, is we needed a really strong mid bass. So we came out with the new Neo series mid-bass drivers. I happen to have the eight here that I love to show off. This was a sample of one. Um, these look very much just like the production models um, without some of the badging. But this is the Neo 8. 
Uh, these are the two ohm drivers. We have them in four ohm driver as well. Uh, they are currently available and shipping. Uh, 350 watts RMS power handling. They play 40 to 400 hertz. Uh, sorry, um, I grabbed the wrong information there on my numbers. It says 40 to 250 kilohertz. That's wrong. These are 40 to 400 hertz frequency response. They are super sensitive for a mid-base driver at 92 dB. Uh, US made voice coils perform phenomenally. I have a set of these in my, in my Kia that I drive now. They are very, very, very impressive woofers. So then let's talk about three-way components because these have become the standard for car audio nowadays. Most vehicles anymore have the, the application for them or it's easy enough to do a, a drop in three or two and a half and a six in the door, and, you know, three in the dash and then your tweeters up on your A pillars or your sail panels, whatever you want to do. So these are the speakers that some people are not aware that we have. We have our Hex Pro Diamante Italias. So these are some very, very impressive speakers. I actually have them here. So that is the six. These are fully machined aluminum frames for all of the speakers. As you can see, all machined baskets and frames for everything. Okay. So completely one piece units. Uh, very rigid mid base drivers and mid range cones. So you get snappy, accurate response without any muddiness to them. Uh, these will take about 180 watts RMS if you're using the built-in crossover, or not, sorry, not built-in crossover, but the included crossover. Um, high, high-end speakers. Um, we These retail at like $3,000. So they are not anything to play around with. They, they are serious. We were serious when we designed these and they perform like you would expect them to. Um, I actually love playing with these in an active setup. Gives you some control from a DSP that uh, just makes these things really come to life. Um, on the Pro, sorry, on the Hex Diamante Italias, I actually run, okay, up until a couple days ago, I was running the six and a halfs in my front doors. A lot of guys at Knowledge Fest got to see these in Dallas and, and hear them. Um, very, very impressive speakers at a price range for three-way kits that is not uncommon. These, these we sell at about $1,300 retail. Um, the great thing with these is that the mid-range is a two and a half. So it is an easy drop in. You just have to make the adapter plates to put them into, you know, a Toyota or Ford or Chevy or whatever. Um, my Kia took nothing to make that three-way fit in the dash. And then I fabricated some sail panels to put my tweeters in. Um, the cone on these is very, very rigid. So it gives you a lot of mid base response. I was very surprised at what I was able to get out of them even before I swapped over to my eights. Uh, so now I have these as rear fill speakers and they still work quite well. They play pretty high. Um, but again, quality in design, quality in performance, and a response that, that I find very impressive from my years of experience in, in three-way kits. So then we have our DES, and this is what I would call the biggest bang for the buck that Diamond Audio offers. This is a three-way kit that retails for just over $500. They are a composite ABS frame, so it is still a rigid frame. You have the foam core composite cone, so it is lightweight, very efficient, but very musical. They sound really, really good. Uh, the three-inch mid-range, I put these in a, in a test set a while back, and I ran just the mid-range without a tweeter and could probably have gotten away without ever adding the tweeter other than I like to just have a little bit more on the top end. So these are really, really impressive speakers. Gives you a price point for your customer or if you are the end customer 
to put a three-way system into a vehicle that just will blow you away. Let's talk about the legend, the Hex. These are speakers that have been around for quite some time. The proprietary Kevlar Nomax Hex Cone uh, with that hex pattern in the cone gives it a, that is probably one of the most rigid drivers I've ever messed with. Uh, they are so snappy and perform so well for a non-conventional six and a half. These are a straight six inch woofer that just does things that a woofer that size probably really shouldn't have been capable of. Uh, it just diamond audio really hit the mark when we designed these years ago and they were so good. We just kind of kept bringing them back year after year, after year, after year um, to the point that they still exist now. Then there's the evolution of the hex series into our newer stuff. You have the H 65 C or a, sorry, H 65 S and the H 65 a which are the ones down here on the on the bottom left. They are an aluminum cone mid-base driver. You have a aluminum or silk dome tweeter available. These are Clipple optimized. They handle about 180 watts RMS power. Uh, very snappy mid-range response. They play nice and low. They will give you plenty of impact for your mid-base. Uh, 12 dB per octave crossover slopes built into the crossover. I'm a big fan of active with anything like this. So uh, active on these, you can do quite a bit with them. They're very impressive. We also have the shallow mount series, which is a little different. They are a 1.3 inch deep, six inch mid-base driver, or sorry, six and a half inch mid-base driver. It has the same aluminum cone. Uh, these are only available in silk dome tweeters. For a shallow speaker, they perform very well. They don't play as low as a, as a traditional six and a half inch mid bass, but they do quite well when you put these in spaces like in classic cars and things like that, where you don't want to chop up doors and you put them in kick panels or you need something very shallow in a vehicle. Cannot tell you how impressive I they, they get with what they are capable of doing. Let's drop the base a little bit and talk about hex technology and the hex pro drivers. This was the evolution of the old D9 stuff with the TDX technology. And so kind of give you an idea what this is, is it is a thermal cooling system the way that this woofer is built is you have neodymium magnets inset into ferrite magnets to help with cooling and performance and power handling. So the way that this goes together is that motor structure all goes together and is inset into our basket. The basket is a cast aluminum frame with cooling vents on it. So all of what you see here on the, the screen are, with the the little ridges all the way around those are active cooling vents there is air in between them so when you look through it you can see the motor structure but it pulls the heat out of there allows for higher power handling better performance and a a longer you can drive this thing harder longer without risking damage to the woofer okay so these also have a hex composite cone the cast cooling, the cast frame with the radial cooling technology and an extremely low FS, meaning that you can tune these very low. Uh, a 15, we have these in 12, 10, 10, 12, and 15. The 15 has an FS of 22 hertz. The 12 has an FS of 23. And the, the 10 has an FS of 27. So if you want to put these in a vented enclosure and tune it really low, you can get tons and tons of output out of them at low frequency. The Hex series woofers, you get some of a trickle down technology. You get the, the cast aluminum frame. Uh, you get an, a copper anodized 
radiating heat sink that's built into the motor structure. The fiber weave is a composite of several different fibers um, that we keep kind of under wraps, but it is a very stiff cone so that it gives you plenty of output without sacrificing performance. These again will play pretty low. They don't have the FS qualities that our HXP do, but they still have a very low FS and will play low and take good power for what they are. Uh, three, four, three inch, four layer high temp voice coil on all uh, three models, the 10, the 12, and the 15 that are available. They are Clipple optimized as are all our speakers. DES is a great bang for your buck. It's again, always with DES, the Diamond Elite Series just kind of is that when you want really good performance, but you can't quite take those higher steps um, in your pocketbook, but you won't be disappointed in these DES woofers. Hard to explain how good they are. I've seen guys do these in applications that I just didn't expect them to do what they would do. Um, stamped basket as opposed to a cast aluminum basket, but very, very rigid cone, very great performance, power handling on par with, you know, what you would expect from Diamond Audio at this price point. So these are easily, if you want to talk entry level into a audio file driver, these are some of the best available. And then we, let's talk about space and compact woofers. These are always something that comes up for every manufacturer. We see this all over the industry nowadays. Cars are getting smaller. People are worried about weight or you know traveling and wanting to keep everything going without eating up a ton of space in their vehicle. Uh, so these spare tire woofers that we designed, uh, we've had other variations of them in the past. These are our new passive series, and I can tell you they do way more than you would probably expect them to do. Uh, testing them in my car, in my son's car, when we were doing some beta testing on them, I was blown away by what this thing will do at 300 watts RMS. For somebody who's looking for that great bottom end fill with a little bit of punch, and it, and it just has that impact without being overbearing, these things are very, very impressive. Shallow and standard options. Uh, so shallow is going to be more for like your European or your German cars uh, and Japanese cars. Shallow or standard mount will be more for like your American made cars and things like that. Um, the entire frame, the entire outer basket is cast aluminum. So it's non-resonant. So when you put this in your spare tire, it's not going to make everything vibrate and shake. Okay. Uh, dual forum voice coils, 300 watts RMS power handling. These things, they're just superior to what I have seen from other brands. Uh, performance wise, they will not let you down and they will play, uh, quite low, uh, up to 400 Hertz, sorry, up to 500 Hertz down to probably about 30 or 35 Hertz with no problem. So that's it, guys. That's what I've got. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Piper. You're welcome, let's go, sir. Let's go ahead and put this away. And we will get back to a little bit of discussion here. So, um, again, I think you covered a lot of the, well, you covered a lot of categories, if you really think about it. You talked about amplifiers. You talked about DSP. You talked about, you know, uh, uh, high-frequency drivers. You talked about subwoofers. And you even throw in... A little curveball and what I would consider a high-end hideaway option. How's that? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. And you, I, I, I don't know why I want to start there, but I do. I want to start with that one because I think that one's a really unique offering. Um, there are those clients that don't mind spending the money for, you know, higher-end great stuff. But you know what? They can't sacrifice the trunk. I know a lot of people like this. Um, right for whatever, a multitude of different reasons, and I'm not calling anybody out, but at the end of the day, you can't sacrifice your trunk, right? That's that's all I got to say about that. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't want top-grade stuff. 
Like yes. I hate what I what I what I don't like as a consumer and as a car audio buff is I hate compromise. Right? If I, I've worked hard for my money, I'm gonna spend it. I don't like compromise. I want to optimize my situation. That right exactly. there gave me a glimmer of hope for my right. for one of my one right. of my projects that I was thinking about. Dave, what did you think about that? Uh, there's some great solutions to the the I don't want to lose any trunk space. No problem. Yeah. We're not going to lose any trunk space today. Yeah. So by taking away those misnomers in the in the in the sales floor, where the the assumption is sub box, you know, when a solution like that comes out, it takes us to another level. And the fact that Diamond did it means Diamond amplifiers, Diamond speakers are going in that car, because with a solution like that, we know that they're going to trust uh, the experience of Diamond and the audiophile nature of their gear. That uh, if they're building a subwoofer that does this well. I should grab the other stuff they sell that also equals its performance. There's always something yeah. to be said about being tonally matched. I mean, that's a big selling yep. point. I used to use that a lot in my sales um, pitches as well. Now, what are the drivers in those in those uh, enclosures, Brian? So those actually, it's surprising. They they are listed under our DMD series, which is kind of our starter level. But they're not a starter level woofer. I, I would put them on par with our DES you know, kind of right above DMD. Um, Dave has one in, in his in his hand right there, the DES micro box, which if anybody's played with one of those, man, you, that thing is so impressive. So that is a an eight inch vented enclosure that um, I, I was telling Dave earlier, I have one sitting here on my test bench. I run it on one channel of a four channel amp and these things get so low and play so loud on one channel of an amplifier that it shakes every wall in my house. See that that right there is like one of those quick, you know, five channel amp jobs or six channel yes. amp jobs. You know what I mean? Front speakers, rear fill, throw that in the trunk, you're done. I wish we could do those all day long. Yes. I mean, I think every shop wishes they could do that all day long. But again, solutions. And, right. there, you know, uh, this whole month, you know, there's two sides of audiophile. You have the uncompromising design. Who cares? I don't care how much space you need type Yep. You know, stuff like let's look at like, you know, you, you talked about that Italia stuff like like that stuff yeah. is uncompromised. They don't care how thick the right. basket is. Right. They did whatever it took to get a certain result. That's one side. On the other side of that coin is top grade high end gear for more realistic situations. And I 100%. feel like th there's, there's a lot of that going on with the diamond offering. OK, so um, we're don't worry, Dave, we're going to go through your table. I just want to go through two <laughs> or three questions that I had. So on the speaker line, I mean, mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, Brian, like I, I'm of that group, you know, growing up 80s, 90s, Diamond was a big deal, right? Sure. 2000s was a big deal, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so when I think of Diamond, I do think of speakers first. I'm not going to lie. That's just my opinion. Right. Okay? I just feel like speakers is the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Um, but now seeing the trajectory of the, the new, let's call it the new footprint of Diamond, um, this is a really big and complete offering. So those amplifiers, I think Diamond nailed it. Uh, I said in our last show with DSP, and I, I'm going to get Dave to, to chime in on this now that he's had some time to process it since our last show. Multi-channel, DSP included, Bluetooth included, app, like form factor. Yeah. This is what I feel everybody will be asking for. Dave, confirm my thoughts. Confirmed. Yes, 100% built in DSP. We don't want a separate box. We don't want to have to try and integrate with cables. We want direct access. Um, it's the best ability to be able to create good audio. Um, we've seen it from competitors. More and more of these amps need to come out. Uh, and I'm glad that Diamond has had the foresight to do this now uh, before everyone else did. I'm going to go on the record as somebody who's uh, sat in a few of these product trainings in the last couple of years. Uh, I believe right now, as it stands, Diamond has the most expansive offering of multi-channel DSP amplifiers on the market today. We're trying. We're trying not, to kind of. That's be not ahead a presumption. I, I believe that is a yeah. fact. You know, and right. I think I think that's there was a there was a whole purpose behind this, um, you know, expedition of new product and, and planning, and obviously kudos to the entire team and whoever was involved in that. Um, but Brian, I mean, th th this is where it's going. This is where it's going. And, and you know, we're not getting rid of any of the, the existing amplifiers at this point. Hex and DES, which is if anybody's ever run DES, you know, those those are just really well-built amplifiers. Um, but 
there are those purists that that want to keep their amplifiers and their processor separate, or they want you know a a DES amplifier like what you're seeing right there, and be able to process it and and get that performance. So you know we're still going to have these amplifiers available for some time. That's why we went ahead and designed the Pro Series DSPs as well. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I'm not arguing that there isn't a market for that. I'm just right. saying that the, if I look, if I step back out of the forest and look at the trend, mm -hmm. I feel that that is kind of where the trend is going. That's all. Yeah, I'm integrated saying. DSP definitely is the trend for the future. And, and and even for myself, I always like to kind of put myself in a consumer shoes. You know, it depends on the project or the vehicle I'm talking about. You know, yep. if I'm talking about my daily vehicle where I truly do need the space because it doubles as my family shopping vehicle on the weekend. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm probably want to tuck away a little small multi-channel, right? Easy mm -hmm. door replacements and a small box that I could either, to your point, that enclosure like that goes in the wheel well or yep. a small one like the one that Dave has his hand on that I could remove if I know I have some major Costco shopping to do, right? Right. Great. Now, Perfect. if you're talking about my whip that I'm working on, that only comes out on nice days and it's in the garage and it's an ongoing project and I don't care, then hell yeah, give me two mono blocks and, you know, a four channel and a right. two right. four channels and I don't care how much space and, you know what I'm saying, give me two 15s and I don't care about the trunk. So I think that that's always going to be around. Let's be honest, it's kind of like what we strive to have at one point in our in our lives. But but I do appreciate where that Diamond has recognized that the trend is going that direction. Therefore, helping yes. distributors like Dave and his customers, the dealers, have more tools to put systems Absolutely. in the cars. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's talk speakers real quick. Why don't you walk us through, Dave, what you got for any of there? Well, I have the best of the audiophile nature. So, obviously, we've got things like the three-way. So, this is DES. Comes with a full ma uh, crossover matrix. But you get a tweet, a three-inch, a six-and-a-half, and you get all of these wonderful adapter plates. What are those? So, so these allow us to mount dash speakers in a lot of different applications. So obviously a four by six, we have our, our BMW uh, and we have our four inch. So it adapts that three inch. Now, Brian hadn't alluded to it, but there is a couple changes coming. So uh, three inch is really not the play anymore. It's two and a half. And we've heard that the two and a half will be coming. So nice. uh, the great advancement from Diamond there. Um, this is the start. This is where most guys start for a three-way set. Um, really easy to go active with this system as you grow, uh, but nothing wrong with their matrix. They have a great crossover matrix for those two channel guys that trust the audio designers at the, the manufacturer, and they absolutely do a great job there. Um, Brian had the eight inch version of this, but that's the MS65 Neo. Um, that is by far and away one of the best releases Diamonds has released in a long time. It's funny that it when we when I first saw this unit, I believe we had Brian on it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. It was during a motorcycle presentation. Yes, yes, Absolutely. that's correct. Yeah, those are our, our motorcycle mid range, uh, top end mid range uh, performers right there. It's it's a solid. Well, these solid... are these are not just getting used in motorcycles anymore. We're starting to see guys with cars go. Uh, my bike's awesome. How about my car? Can I have the same ones? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're building three way kits out of these speakers. Okay. Um, so that's just a big piece of being an active system. And what we do is Diamond offers their tweeter kits across all of their different lines. So mm -hmm. you can add in a single tweeter. You can add in the three inch. Um, you know, there's lots of things going on. So we can add these to this. Are those available MS a la carte, Neo. Brian? Are those available a la carte, the different components? The, th the threes and the tweeters are available a la carte, and I believe the twos will be available a la carte once we okay. finally release and, them. And obviously yeah. the eights and the six in the pro, in the pro line are a la carte. In, in the Neo Absolutely. line, yes, they are, okay. they are a la carte as well. Okay. 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 Keep keep it going. So, and then to his to his uh, presentation, the H six five A and S, uh, definitely our top selling audiophile speaker. Um, great matrix as well. Uh, what absolutely is that? gorgeous piece. That is the matrix, and it is the size of an amplifier right Holy now. Holy cow! It looks like an uh, amp. It does, mm -hmm. and it is built very well. So we never see these come back under warranty. Um, we also had a lot of questions from our consumers on the silk or aluminum. Um, you know what? It's a hard toss-up, but a lot of guys are like, ooh, aluminum, no, they'll be tinny. Um, that's actually something that uh, I wanted to allude to during Brian's presentation is that the aluminum tweeters are dampened. So they are not yeah. tinny. They are really bright and very clear, and they have their place. If you've got a lot of reflective material and those tweeters are going to go up in the dash, I definitely recommend the silk. 
Uh, but if you're in an older vehicle and the tweeters are facing you and you've done a nice sail, uh, sail panel, uh, the aluminums outperform the silk, I believe. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a personal taste, but that is not an aluminum, uh, a normal aluminum tweeter. Uh, it is advanced. Um, a lot of people are scared off by the aluminum, and there's no reason to be. They are uh, absolutely oh, taken oh, care oh, of. Oh, Brian, you're going to like me now. Now I'm going to dig deep into you here. <laughs> Save this open can of worms. Oh, so, the can of worms tweeters, on aluminum. Two, two separate types of material for the tweeter. Yes. Both dome tweeters, one aluminum, one silk. Which one plays lower and which one has a better off-axis performance? So uh, the Silk Dome is a smoother response. So it's got that more muted kind of, um, it's got that warmth to it. The aluminum is brighter. The aluminum has the capability to play a little bit lower because it is more rigid. Mm. Um, but it is a brighter kind of more in-your-face tweeter. It's not harsh. Like Dave says, it's not harsh. It's not crazy bright but it is bright. So it, it has a little bit different sound to it. Um, I will, I will go with along with Dave and say, you know, with the, the aluminum cone that the mid range has on those, I prefer the silk dome tweeter Interesting. because you get such a bright snap out of that aluminum cone that the silk dome tweeter just kind of balances it out on the top end. Maybe I, I'd love to see the difference of uh, on on off axis kind of response on that normally when the lower the tweeter plays it has a better off axis performance but it's, it's not always true i guess it depends it yeah it just really kind of depends on the environment you know we're mm -hmm. talking cars and, and every single car is for the record so. the worst environment to build a high-end sound system in but hey we uh, know yeah, this yeah. already <laughs> right. we, we, you know we, we knew that going in we knew that going in yeah um you know that's probably something that we could look at doing some tests with that i could show down the road Maybe we'll pull something together and, and so, uh, see what we can do. The only reason I'm geeking out on that is because, you know, our installers, our dealers, again, those two customers, you got that one customer is like, no, I want the perfect sound stage. I want to see the pods. I want them faced perfectly to my mm -hmm. ear. You know what I mean? I'll pay for the fab. Then you got the other guys. No, I don't even want my wife to know I changed these speakers. No, <laughs> put them back in factory locations. Right. So right, again, right. Two different scenarios. So that's why I asked the question. Is there one preference over the other when it comes to the tweeter performance? Now, Dave, uh, Dave I'm going to throw it back to you because we didn't get into the low-end stuff yet. For sure. So we did show this off just a little bit ago. Uh, this is the 8-inch DES prefab box. Uh, comes in dual as well as the single. Um, this is a dark horse. This is one that uh, a lot of people are unimpressed by the size of the woofer and the box. And then you put this in their vehicle and they are surprised at the output. This is an absolute powerhouse for an eight inch. Um, the dual is very heavy handed in its uh, dynamic range. Um, very, very low wait, base wait, response. Wait, 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 sorry, I want to stop you. Did you say dual is in there's one that has two drivers? Two drivers, you oh, got it. That's so, more interesting. Like everything diamond, uh, there's some engineering inside this box because there's no way that woofer weighs 35 pounds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there is some serious things going inside this box. Um, we've opened one of these and actually took a cross section out of it to see what they've done. And uh, someone was paying attention to the audiophile nature of a woofer. Um, they really designed these boxes well. And because the woofer is in a prefab box that is meant for the woofer, it outperforms. And it's just another thing that shows you that building the right box for the subwoofer makes all the difference in the world instead of just using prefabs. So um, audiophile is not about prefab drop-ins. It's about building things the right way. And this is definitely not an audiophile sub box. Very cool. Very cool. Um, another woofer we sell a ton of, DES 10s and 12s. Dual 2, dual 4s, 10s, 12s, and 8s. Um, as of right now, there's no grills for the 10s and 12s, but there is a grill for the 8. Uh, so for those really low profile situations where you're trying to hide something behind a seat or under a seat, the eights go really well there. And then, of course, the tens and twelves fit everywhere. You can fit a 10 and a 12. Uh, really outperform what their numbers are. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Um, they say a number and they say a response range. They outperform that every day. Uh, we know this because we absolutely abuse the hell out of these. And uh, they don't come back. We see these go out and they stay out and people enjoy them for a long period of time. So it's a great investment, a uh, good step up from DMD. Um, and uh, 
they fit a lot of the space where a normal woofer wouldn't. So they've got a really good um, mounting depth to fit in a lot of applications where we normally wouldn't fit a full-size woofer. We'd have to go shallow. So these get used a lot under seats in Dodge Rams, uh, a lot of under seat in F-150s. So uh, that's a great woofer and an outperformer for sure for a full-size woofer. All right. Well, Can I throw so, something in there real quick for you, Dave? Please, go I ahead. want to make Dave happy. Uh, about a month ago, I just approved grills for those woofers. Awesome. Bingo. I absolutely appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. And because that subwoofer fits in places it, it shouldn't, right. uh, the grills become more and more important for sure because we put yep. them in very tight spaces in very small boxes and they do an unbelievable job of filling in those in those spots. Um, and to that point, you know, the small space requirement of so many things oh, we do. Yes, let's take a look at that there. That's yeah. the six channel. So like just to put it against a three inch speaker, you know, uh, that's a full. Is it me or is that crossover view. double that size? Pretty much. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> so we talk about space requirements, right? So you can put this in or you can just ditch it and just put this in and do an active <laughs> system with full control. So this is making a lot more sense. Um, the DSPs were a little bit too big for a lot of the applications we we're dealing with and trying to find, you know, those perfect mounting situations. Um, Wait, to, to, be clear, to be clear, so our dealers understand. Hold that up again, Dave. Brian, explain to be, uh, what exactly is that unit? That is the MS DSP 66. So that was, that was a, you know, intentionally designed for motorsports. So they're waterproof, they're sealed. Um, so it's it's designed for you know applications where water or mud or something might be a factor, but that can work in anything. Um, we have one that is in a a vehicle in a in a car that will be at knowledge or not at knowledge sorry at SEMA next week. So is that DSP um, only or DSP amp? That is DSP only. Okay, fair enough. That's what I want to yeah, clarify. That is DSP okay. only. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we could build an amplifier that would. Oh, you say standards. that now, but I don't not know. Yet. <laughs> not yet. I, I mean, I mean, you know, let's let's look at technology and and be real about it. I mean, look at the D7 amp I showed from you know that was 1994, 95 mm -hmm. when those came around, mm -hmm. right? They were huge. Yeah. And now I've got this. I know. Right. That's, that's the whole so thing. so you've got to look at what the capabilities of technology are versus what. Yeah, so in, in another four or five years, we might have Who amplifiers knows? that big with 10 channels of output. Maybe you'll have who to knows? roll them out because they're paper thin. Who knows? Right, yeah. Hey, right, who just knows? Saying, you never yeah. know. You never know. All right, <laughs> last thing Last thing on this discussion. I want to have a little bit of fun. Um, Dave, you're building a car or you're building your own whip. What are you putting in it audio-wise? Hex. 100% hex. Um, it is the most accessible audiophile level that we have for sure. Um, it's an outperformer. It, it does such a great job at what it was designed to do. Um, it's got looks and features that we're not used to seeing in the price point. So all the covers are magnetic. You know, we've got full access to all of our plates, all via magnet, so we can easily adjust things. Um, it's hard not to notice diamond amplifiers when they're installed. Uh, they stand out. So they're a little bit of a trunk opener. You uh, you like to show this product off. You don't try to hide it, uh, which is really important with Audiophile because a lot of it is uh, is showmanship too. So we're always showing off how we're doing those installs, those clean wire installs. Uh, we're not hiding these amplifiers. We're showing these off. They're getting plated in. They're getting plexi. They're getting lights. Uh, they're getting that next level of install. So we want to make sure the gear stands up to that, that quality standard. And like Hex is great. This is my go-to. But all of the features that we saw here flow down as well. So when we go to DES, we get the same aluminum covers, uh, all extruded aluminum. Honestly, beautiful amplifiers. These are not amplifiers you want to hide. Um, all the controls are on the top surfaces. Uh, these are designed by guys that understand where we have to do things. Um, nothing worse than an end plate or a top plate mountable control that you can't access once it's hidden in a box. So great little panels that come off. Um, this style of amplifier is just something Diamond's known for now, uh, where everything is integrated into these beautiful panels and hidden and snapped in. No tools to needed to take the covers off to get these access to the controls. Uh, and even in the Hex series, they hide all the little mounting holes. Mm -hmm. So like DES has it extruded on the outside. They actually give another panel 
to hide the screw mounting holes on the top of the amp. So very super clean. It's like some installers had any had some type of input on design or something. Imagine that. Think. <laughs> Imagine that. Think, so yeah, so just thought, to be, had a thought process. Maybe. So just to be clear, Dave, you your hex top to bottom, I'm a hex side, guy. Yep. amp, all all the all of it. All right. DSP, yep. no DSP. Uh, always DSP. Always There's DSP. no wrong answer yes, for sir. DSP. How about you, Brian? Real quick, you uh, you have a new okay. car. Never mind your Kia. Brand new car. What are you putting? Okay, in? brand new car. Um, I'm actually so. Funny thing is, I'm actually working on a '94 Honda Prelude that is my little project car. Um, believe it or not, because my Kia already has the best, I'm actually going to go DES oh. through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Through the whole thing because I want to showcase. Like what, like over capable. the top overpowered DS or like reasonable, reasonable yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll run it full active, obviously with a DSP, um, but it's going to be a reasonable build. It, it's it's you know there'll be there'll be a three way active kit up front. Um, a little different because I will have a center channel in it, but I want to show what DS, DES is really capable of versus the highest end gear we've got. I, you know, I could easily take these and put these into the doors and, and, you know, put threes and tweeters up in my dash where I have spots already built for them. But let's do something that is, is a departure from that standard. And, but if, it, if I just bought another car, like my daily driver kind of thing, I honestly would probably go uh, the hex speakers all day long, uh, hex woofers, uh, amplifiers, um, I honestly would probably sit and wait for our HXM DSP amplifiers. I didn't mention those, but there's good. No, so we have three lines. Absolutely. We did cover it in our DSP episode for sure. We did cover it in yeah. DSP, uh, but today we didn't mention them because they're yeah. not here yet. Um, but we will have three lines of integrated amplifiers with DSP and HXM is the other version of that. So because I would want compact space, but I want high mm -hmm. power. So that would probably be the route I would go there. Can I try? Can I try? Here's what I would do. Sure. Yeah. HXM amplifier DSP multi-channel for my front stage, three-way. But what are those crazy, ridiculous subs that you showed before? The that looks like a HXPs? turbo jet engine? Yes. The Hex Pros, yeah. I would get a mono or two mono two mono amps, either one or two, uh, depending on the configuration of the voice calls. Two of those in tens. And uh, that's what I would rock. Okay. That's me. All right. Yeah, I would go with the well, old school mono, you know, for the sub power, but mm -hmm. have that processed, you know, multi-channel right. setup on the on the new amps for the three for the for the uh, three-way fronts. That's what I would. Do. Well, I don't know if I've told you before. Uh, I run the Hex Pro 15 in the trunk of my Kia. So one That's 15, a serious woofer. Yeah, that is a that is a serious serious woofer, and it was funny because. Uh, a great little story, you know, when you go, I took the car to Knowledge Fest in Dallas and we were doing demos with it and guys would see there's a 15, like, why a 15? And you play certain songs where, you know, a 15 just does something that other woofers can't do. Yeah. And I'm scared of 15s. And when they ask why, and when they, you know, but these guys, you go, why a 15? And then this, this note drops and the whole car kind of shakes and vibrates and you go, that's why. <laughs> I, I personally have a fear of 15s i don't know what it is it's a, like a phobia i've been in cars with it and i was like holy cow it's, it's scary sometimes how deep like down low it gets but right. anyhow right brian this has been awesome man thank you so much for coming today talking audiophile with us covering so many different categories um always love having you brother we'll, we'll right, talk man. Well, i appreciate one. you guys having me thanks for thanks for showing off some great product for us dave and uh we'll Absolutely. look forward to the next one for sure Sounds good. All right. So Dave, real quick, what do we want people to know? I mean, first, let me give people the digits, right? If you want information on Diamond audio products, you want to check out their website, Ever Evolving. But Diamond's pretty good with putting up the new stuff, like just so you get a taste of what it looks like, feels like, specs, and that type of stuff. So that'd be diamondaudio.com. And of course, if you're in Canada, well, you're going to have to call Dick's Performance because they are the exclusive Canadian distributor of Diamond Audio in Canada. Real quick, Dave, final message that you want dealers tuning in who, who may have piqued their interest to get some Diamond Audio gear in their shop. What would you have to say to them? Diamond Audio is not just about their lineage. They're about the future, right? So they're driving this market of DSP amplifiers, and they're really paying attention to what we're doing in the car. 
Um, I don't think there's a lot of this happening in the industry right now. A lot of it was just product procurement and making sure that the base was there. Uh, Diamond did the complete opposite during these uh, last few years, and they keep pushing further and further ahead. Um, and we are excited to see this stuff drop. And I really hope everyone that tunes into these CMAs is also excited for Diamond Audio to be having uh, such a growth opportunity in these segments and that uh, they can see that there is a full line of Diamond Audio that we've presented over the years uh, with CMA, uh, everything from DMD all the way up to Hex Pro and even the Italia stuff. Uh, there is a full offering here that a lot of people were unaware of. Everyone thinks speakers when you say Diamond. Let's let's change that. This is a full audio line with things that match very well with each other, that are designed to fit with each other, and uh, everything is available in Canada. There's no limits. I'm not, I'm gonna lie. I think now is the best time ever to get on with this. You, I think now is the perfect time because they're just about to break out all relevant product that's gonna really make you look like a superstar in your area. You just gotta get in your shop in your store. That's 100%. it. Hundred percent. Yeah, Dave. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for coming in. And of course, the ben, thanks for having effort us. for the setup, man. I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Enough. Take care. Sounds good. All right. So that was Brian Piper from Diamond Audio, as well as Dave McLean representing Dick's Performance. And I want to thank both those guys for coming in, talking to us about all the latest Diamond Audio stuff. Now, uh, not too much le time left, but we are making the draw soon, guys. So if you haven't already, head over to cmanetworks.com slash giveaway. We are giving away two all-inclusive trips to Master Tech Expo in 2023. It's totally free to sign up. cmanetworks.com slash giveaway. And while you're there, obviously check out many more videos that we have on file. We've done some other ones with Brian. He's got his own profile on there as well as Dave McLean and Dick's performance as well. The cmanetworks.com website, it's literally where the 12 volt industry connects. That's this for that's it for this CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Yeah. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left all out right now. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?